Hello everyone, and welcome back to Real Time, where we talk about the movies we like and the ones we don't. I'm Tyler. And I'm Molly. And we're here to talk about a, uh, a pair of movies from a uh, famous comedy pair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very famous. We're talking about our favorite Abbott and Costello movies. Mm-hmm. I say favorite, but we've probably only seen these two. No, I've, I have seen more. Okay, I've only seen these <laughs> two. Anyways, so... We're going to talk about... The first one, which is my favorite, I assume we're going to talk about that one too. Okay, just interrupt me like that. <gasps> you were talking! Yeah, I, yeah, I said you interrupted me. Yeah, I said you weren't talking. I was talking. No, you weren't. Shut up. Well, you take long pauses between your breaks. Anyways, we're going to first talk about Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Now, both of these movies, of course, star Bud Abbott and Lou Costello as Chick and Wilbur, although they play different characters in both of these movies. Mm-hmm. But it gets weird given the ending of this. We'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah. Now, fun fact about, uh, about these two guys... In uh, DC Comics, Harley Quinn has a couple of uh, hyenas that she named Bud and Lou after Abbott and Costello. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, although in the in the movie Birds of Prey, she only has the one hyena and she named it after Bruce Wayne. Oh, that's not as cool. Nah. Oh well. But yeah, so that's pretty neat. This movie also stars Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman, mm-hmm. Bela Lugosi as Dracula, and this was actually the only time if you don't count stage productions and like Hollywood commercials and stuff this was the only other time he played Dracula aside from the the 1931 film that is kind of funny because when you think Dracula I always think Bela Lugosi even though he has even though Christopher Lee has probably played Dracula more than him oh yeah yeah Christopher Lee played Dracula I guess six or seven times yeah I guess Lugosi is the more common one and or the most iconic one, I mean. I mean, Bela, Bela Lugosi has played other vampires, you know, and oh, yeah. stuff like White Vampire, or White Zombie. White Zombie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, thank God you're here. <laughs> Otherwise, oh, I'd yeah. sound like an idiot. Well. <laughs> Shut up. So yeah, he has played other vampires before. So, but this is the only other time he's played the vampire. You know. Yeah, that's interesting. And unfortunately, it's not Boris Karloff as the Frankenstein monster, although he was asked. This time, it's Glenn Strange, who he does fine. Yeah. I mean, he's he's no Boris Karloff, but he does fine. Yeah. The monster doesn't get a lot to do in this movie, nah. but for the stuff he does get to do, Glenn Strange plays a pretty good monster. Yeah, yeah, he does. Funny story, though, all three of these uh, monster actors have played the Frankenstein monster before. <laughs> that is funny. Lon Chaney Jr. played him in, um, I believe it was um, the Frankenstein movie that came after Son of Frankenstein. I can't remember the title of it, though. I don't know. And Bela Lugosi played, no, no. No, okay, hold on. Yeah, that's when Lon Chaney Jr. played the Frankenstein monster, I believe. Then Bela Lugosi played him in the movie in uh, Dr- in Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. And then, obviously, Glenn Strange is playing him here. Yeah. And with, which go- and, uh, with Lugosi playing the, the monster before, he was considered to play the Frankenstein monster in the original Frankenstein movie. Mm-hmm. But... There, there's a there's a number of uh, uh, reasons why he what he didn't play him either because he rejected the role or uh, the director rejected him, which whatever it may be, Lugosi was considered for the role but he didn't do it. Oh. Hmm. Anyways, back yeah. to Abbott and Costello. So in this movie, the two play Chicken Wilbur, a couple of uh, baggage clerks at an airport. And in comes uh, the the bodies of Dracula and the Frankenstein monster that were uh, sent there by the Wolfman, Larry Talbot. Some guy bought him. 
Yeah, but like Hermes Creek Show. Yeah, but Talbot was was uh, calling the the airport, telling to hold the boxes. Yeah. And uh, uh, Dracula put puts uh, Wilbur under his control mm-hmm. so that he can use his uh, switch the brains with the, him and the monster. Yeah. Because Wilbur's a dummy. Yeah, they want a simple brain. <laughs> A very controllable brain. Yeah, is what they say. I think, <laughs> which makes sense. He's a he's a very silly guy. Yeah, he is. Well, we were, when we were watching the movie, we uh, we we realized that the two of us are are similar to Chicken Wilbur in this movie. Mm-hmm. You know, you're a little grouchy, a little more stubborn. You're a little silly. Yeah. Very silly. <laughs> a little silly. <laughs> very scared. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Probably more popular with the ladies too, but you know. Me? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, it's a pretty basic plot, but it's a, uh, it's really funny. It is really funny. Um, all the you know all the shenanigans they get up to. This is probably one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. If I'm being completely honest. <laughs> you you laugh all the way through, which I mean I do too, but <laughs> yeah. It's just one of those movies that like this one really makes you laugh. I prefer the other one that we're gonna talk about to this one. But this one's funnier. Mm-hmm. This one is my favorite Abbott and Costello movie. Um uh, well I mean I also am a fan of Halloween, so of course they're gonna go meet Frankenstein and all these other monsters are in the movie. Oh. Um, yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, we see we see three monsters in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> just here the other one. Which, why not? We'll get to that right now. Uh, there's a fourth monster in this movie, played by Vincent Price. He reprises his role as the Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. Vincent Price previously played the Invisible Man in The Invisible Man Returns. Uh, you know, just a quick cameo. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah, right at the end, a yeah. little cameo, just just for funsies. Just, because why not? We yeah. we gotta have Vincent Price's lovely voice in this movie too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what was your favorite scene from this movie? Oh my, um, <laughs> where where to begin? Where to begin? There are a lot of funny parts, but I guess. The funniest scene. There's a lot. There's a lot of funny so, scenes. So, but the one that's standing out to me the most right now is when Wilbur and Chick first bring in Dracula's coffin into the museum. Yeah. And Wilbur is setting there, reading the like card that explains who you know, Dracula, Dracula is. is, and Chick is away trying to get Frankenstein off the car or whatever, and Dracula keeps. Opening the opening, opening the casket <laughs> every time Chick leaves, so Wilbur is yeah. He's just he keeps calling Chick back every time Dracula does something, and then Chick comes back, and you know Dracula stops. And I, I love the first time that he he calls Chick like when, right when he turns his back, he goes Chick, what what took you so long? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's so funny. That's that's one of my favorite scenes too. But I also like um, in the uh, the scene in the, in the castle, um, like two specific parts during this because there's a lot. Oh, there is a lot. There's the the the, the parts I want to I want to focus on is um, when they were trying to barricade the door yeah. to get to get away from the Frankenstein monster, <laughs> yeah. but they, like they barricaded it to where he could still open it. Yeah, they like push everything. They push the bed towards the door. To where the door can't push in, but it's a pool door, yeah. so he just opens it. The, the, there's like, he yeah. can't get yeah, in. Yeah, Wilbur's he like, he's, the, he's not getting in here, there's no way. And then he comes <laughs> and he, in and tries to get that. He just opens the door. It's hilarious. And I, and I love when um, when uh, Wilbur put uh, like um, his uh, coat in front of his, uh, his uh, face so he can pretend mm-hmm. to be Dracula to uh, control the monster. Mm-hmm. And then he, then he puts it down in front of him, puts it down and says, he really thinks I'm Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Uh, which, so funny. That, that's probably where the, uh, where, uh, why they, um, how they shot, why they ch- chose to shoot around 
the footage they had of Bela Lugosi for Plan 9 for outer, from Outer Space. Oh, that was going on at the same time? Well, no, that was like a decade later. But like, in, in the movie... What are you talking about? In Plan 9, remember from, uh, from Ed Wood? Um, oh, they had... They, they, their, they had their, their, two scenes... Yeah. They had two scenes of Bela Lugosi. I just misunderstood you at first. And um, they just kept reusing the same footage for him in the movie. <laughs> and then when they had to do to, to uh, cut to his character anywhere else, they had this guy with a cape in front of his face. <laughs> like Dracula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which he does do in this movie a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Like, Ed Wood literally used his wife's chiropractor in in the role that was they didn't make that up for the movie <laughs> that's funny the only made up part about that is that they were that was that they were actually married at the time hmm. not just dating or whatever hmm. <laughs> oh man what what else could you say about oh also also in in the in the castle scene i i liked when uh they were running away from fr the Frankenstein monster. They they went to the room and Dracula and the Wolfman were fighting. Then they got mm -hmm. away from them and went back to the Frankenstein monster. Just kept going back and yeah. forth. And then there's that other part when they go down into I don't know what the room is. They like go downstairs and there's like a a moat that takes it out of the house. <laughs> um, and it's in some room, I guess. I don't know. But there's that spinny door <laughs> that Wilbur keeps getting into and. You know, if you see it, you know what I'm Yeah. About. But. <laughs> what else is there to say about this movie? Because if, if we go any farther, we're probably just going to keep just... Yeah, keep <laughs> we're, uh, talking we're, about all the Just talking about all the funny scenes. It is. It is so funny. It's also just nice to have Wolfman, Frankenstein, Dracula all in one place. Yeah, because like, the last few Frankenstein movies had them all like separately. You know, mm -hmm. you'd have a little bit with Dracula in the beginning. Then it goes to Frankenstein or the Wolfman, or whatever. You know, none of these monsters were actually all together in the in the, these other movies. Yeah. So here they they're all together. Yeah, yeah. it's a, mostly at the end mm -hmm. where we have all three of them. Yeah, but it's still a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, this is probably one of the best like versus movies that I've seen. I mean, yeah, it's not really called a versus movie, but it's a versus movie. <laughs> I guess you could say that, yeah. You know, it's up there with Alien vs. Predator or Freddy vs. Jason or Godzilla vs. Kong. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just so fun. <laughs> I will admit, it just drags a little bit yeah. during the part where they're at, like, the masquerade ball. And they... Just a little, until he finally gets back up to yeah. that. It's just a little drag. But it's, you know, it's still... It's fine. Yeah. You can watch and it fine. Dr Dracula shows up, too. Yeah. Which, again, it is great to see Bela Lugosi as Dracula. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, he's not my favorite Dracula, but he's he he's Dracula. He is, yeah. He is Dracula. Like, he, he was made for that role. Oh, yeah. So, shall we move on to the next one, then? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. So, my favorite Abbott and Costello movie is Abbott and Costello Meet the Invisible Man. Now, it, it's funny that the last movie ended with them meeting the Invisible Man. Yeah. Because this is in no way connected to that one. Nope. Completely you know? different. But it does seem like it's connected to the original movie. Mm -hmm. Now, the Invisible Man in this one isn't uh, a griffin relative. It's, uh, he's a boxer named Tommy Nelson who was framed for murdering his, uh, his manager. Because he wouldn't throw a, a fight for the mob. And so he's going invisible in order to uh, hide from the cops, hide from the cops and clear his name. Which has been done in, 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 a, in previous Invisible Man movies. But it, if, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, I, it, it, I say it has uh, some connections with the, um, with the original. Because uh, the, 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 the doctor in this one... Claims that he got the the invisibil invisibility formula from Jack Griffin from the original movie, and that he didn't he doesn't want Tommy to end up the same way as him, just you know, just shot in the back and dying in a hospital. Yeah. So. 
And you know, he's also worried that he that about Tommy going mad with power from the invisibility potion, which, in a sense, he kind of does, but never to the extent that that Griffin did. You know, at most he gets a little rowdy at the bar, but he doesn't really do anything too bad. Yeah, nothing real bad. You know, he's just a little drunk that one time. He's just drinking people's drinks and um, kind of being being a jerk, but. Yeah. To be fair, he is dealing with Bud and Lou. They are a handful. Yes. Big handful. Especially Lou. Yeah. So, you know, but anyways, uh, Abner and Costello play uh, a couple of detectives in this movie mm -hmm. who, you know, they, they just got, they just graduated from a detective academy and they're trying to do, make it make their way in the, in the world. And mm -hmm. their first case is is this yep. the Invisible Man? Yeah. What a way to start! Yeah. And so they're they're uh, tasked with trying to help him just you know, just actually make it to uh, try to get get his name cleared. Excuse me, sorry. And what I kind of like that um, throughout this, uh, Bud is actually kind of trying to turn him in, but then he's like, mm, Nah, no, nah, I shouldn't, but I want to. Yeah, it also takes him a while to believe that, um, Lou, I don't know what their characters' names are. Yeah, Blood and Lou. That's their names? Yeah, those names in the movie. Oh, okay. Anyways, he's trying to, he doesn't believe that Tommy actually is invisible, and it takes him a while to see that mm -hmm. Lou isn't crazy. Yeah, I, I, I said that, um, uh, the previous movie it was funnier, but this one's pretty funny, too. It is, it is. Because... It was just like lose, abs just absolutely losing it at the, the idea of this invisible guy. Yeah. He's just absolutely. He, he has the best responses to people asking stuff. Mm -hmm. What was he wearing? Air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it, funny. It, so um, what? Uh, I, I I don't quite have as much. Of, to talk about with this one because you know unlike with the previous one I'm uh, I'm a bit more familiar with Dracula and Frankenstein than I am with the Invisible Man which is weird considering the Invisible Man is probably my favorite of the classic Universal Monster yeah, movies that is weird it's just you should deal with that sorry but um yeah it's just and plus I I haven't actually read the, the Invisible Man book I the one by H. G. Wells, not the one by Harlan Ellison. Easy mistake to to, to make, I'm, I'm, I guess though. But yeah. I mean, they're both called Invisible Man. Just one's about an invisible guy, and the other one's about a black guy. So there are two parts that I found especially funny. If you want me to share them? Oh, sure. Um, the I'll save the funniest for last. But the first part is. That I found extremely hilarious is when they are they're playing cards with the Invisible Man. You know he's invisible, but in or not, you know. And someone comes knocking on the door. It's the the policeman. Yeah. And so they have to hide Tommy. Well, keep in mind, Tommy is invisible. He could just stand there and be quiet. Uh, but what Lou does is throw a he throws a. Uh, a tablecloth table cloth over him while he's oh, in his robe. Yeah, over his head. Um, and tells him to kneel down. So he's kneeling down, and it's just this... It's just a dude with a tablecloth over his head. You can tell. The policeman comes in, and, you know, talks a little bit, and he's like, well, who is this? And, of course, he um, takes out the tablecloth, and no one is there. But it's just hilarious that he thought, oh, I need to hide him. He's invisible. I'll throw a towel... I'll throw a tablecloth over his head. <laughs> Um, no, but the part that makes me laugh the most, I have crack up, I laugh all the way through, it can't, can't breathe, I'm laughing so hard, is when Bud and Lou go to scope out the gym, and Tommy's there too, Tommy's invisible, keep that in mind, um, and they're trying to get Lou into, they're trying to get Lou to be a good boxer, so he can, you know, fight this guy and get, you know, see how, what the mob does next, I guess. Yeah. Um, so Lou goes over to a, what's that called? Speed bag? Yeah, speed bag. Speed bag. And Tommy's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch it, and you just pretend you are. 
and it is the hilarious thing because of course Lou is like miles away from actually hitting it. He pretends to hit it with his head. He pretends to blow on it at one point to make it go fast. And it's just so funny. It is hilarious. I'm sure if anything, just search that clip on YouTube. Hopefully it's there because it is the most hilarious thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh, I like I like the part when um, they're at dinner and they're um, and, and uh, Tommy's trying to order, but like mm -hmm. he's invisible, so yeah. what? Let's go. And like when he's trying to eat celery and stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, Lou has to tr pretend like he's bouncing it on his finger. Yeah. I used to juggle. Yeah. <laughs> then, then he uh, takes <laughs> he his finger away. Takes his hand then, away. <laughs> and it's still floating there. <laughs> <laughs> and just um. Uh, Bud getting two glasses of champagne poured, which confuses me. Why, why do they need the waiter to pour the champagne for them? Yeah, maybe it was an etiquette thing back in the. I mean. 50s. Yeah, I think this movie was made in the fifties, but that's still that's weird. It's like it's right there. You can pour it yourself. Yeah. And I also really love the entire you know just fight, like that's the boxing match. Because. <laughs> But Bud is trying his best some, some of the time. Other times he's just letting um, le letting Tommy do the work for him. And like, you mean Lou? No, Tommy. No, you said Bud is doing yeah, his best. Yeah, I, I meant Lou. Yeah. Well, Bud is doing his best, too. Yeah, yeah they were both doing their best. With the Bud is doing his best to not get murdered by the mob. But yeah, the boxing match is hilarious, too. <laughs> at, at one point... Uh, Tommy trips and like knocks himself out, and he's just laying on the on the on the canvas, <laughs> invisible. The other the other boxer trips over him. Yeah. Lou trips over him. They just keep tripping over an invisible body. <laughs> anyway, just that that whole scene, I I love it. And at one point, Tommy goes to you know check see what the uh, what the mob. Uh, boss is uh, saying, and, and it, it seems like he forgot that he has to actually fight for, uh, for Lou. Yeah. He's like, oh wait, I gotta go help this yeah, guy. Poor guy's getting beat up. <laughs> and that that was just a, a really fu funny scene too. I like how you know they they took the the whole idea of the Invisible Man and just decided, hmm, how can we make this really funny? Cause like you know, there's ways you could play this for horror. Of course, the yeah. original movie did that, and I'm assuming the 2020 version did that too. I haven't actually seen that version. And same thing with Hollow Man. I haven't seen that, but from what I can tell, they really played up the horror aspect with that one. But with this one, they played more of the comedy aspect, which yeah. I really like. Oh yeah, definitely. And it's just a lot of fun to watch. Mm, it is. Ah, dang cats. <laughs> so. Yeah, that will probably have to do it for us today. Yeah. We'll see you guys definitely. next time. Oh. Sorry. I say just definitely check these movies out. If check them both out. Definitely. And we will see you next time. Laters.